so I'll be talking about uh, university students. And um, before I start my talk, I would like to acknowledge uh, first the research participants, uh, all the students who accepted generously to complete a very extensive questionnaire, some of my colleagues who are co-authors on some of the publications, and the granting agency. So I don't have the talent of my colleague and friend Ula Romil to sing, but I'm gonna show uh, a little clip. So I'm much more, less creative and more modest. Uh, so uh, can, is it possible to click on the uh, picture? Just to start with, what is a context? So as you can see, this is Montreal is, uh, has a casino. Um, we have a lot of slot machines around. So this clip is to show you one setting, which is the casino setting. And this is an ad that has been uh, circulating on behalf of our state monopoly to promote new forms of games at the casino. Um, and so it's not the only, definitely not the only context in which students gamble and the basic um, objective of this study is really to examine how gambling behaviors of university students do change according to the context in which they gamble. So the um, argument is to examine the role of gambling context and to see whether this context has an effect above and beyond individual characteristics. Um, and in this study we have used mixed models. Uh, so. Um, we have a quantitative and a qualitative study. And in the qualitative study, we, not, we, we also looked at how gamblers derive meaning and give meaning to the context and how this meaning could be a contributive factor to uh, uh, the gambling behaviors. So why university students? Very briefly, uh, we know that this group of uh, the population uh, is at higher risk for problem gambling. So we're we're referring to moderate risk and uh, uh, problem gambling uh, together. Uh, in the general population, studies reveal that the prevalence of problem gambling is around 2%, 2.1%. And uh, among university students, our previous studies have shown that it's around 37 So definitely students do gamble less. So the prevalence of gambling is lower among university students. But when they gamble, we have a higher rate of problem gamblers. Um, also, over the past few years, some forms of gambling have been idealized, perceived as glamorous by students, such as poker. So gambling is gaining some popularity, especially some forms of activities. And finally, we know that this developmental stage, which is what we refer to as emerging adults, uh, like to take risk in terms of multiple behaviors. We know that studies on alcohol use have revealed that there's much more excessive drinking at this developmental period among emerging adults. For, uh, same thing for substance use, and we kind of observe the same trend with gambling. So it is an important population to study. Um, the main question in this study is not necessarily just to look at students and, then be, and their behavior, is also to say that there is something about the context that should be taken into account. It, context should be considered on top of individual risk factors as a risk factor per se. And so some studies have shown that some contexts are much associated with more risk, risky behaviors, excessive behaviors, more excess in gambling. However, uh, 
little studies have shown the dynamic or the interaction between the individual and the context, how one same individual behaves differently from one context to the other. So um, what is unique uh, to context um, is um, experience, as, as Gerda Reed has pointed out, experience of play do vary from context to the other, meanings are different, uh, the environment is completely different, so we can expect things to be different when people are in one context uh, than compared to other contexts. And f in sociology, we have a, a wealth of um, literature, and I will cite only Goffman on that point, who have worked a lot on the experience of play. And transposing this literature to the gambling field, we know that um, ga gambling is a situated social gathering where people, wh we are in a space, we relate to a space, we relate to, a certain, to certain norms, we relate to other people, and the way we situate ourselves in those spaces will, be, uh, will impact on the way we behave. So I'm gonna move now to the methodology. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a mixed methodology, but generally it's a population survey and we have a representative sample of 2,139 uh, respondents. We got a complete list from the registrar's office of all students registered in undergraduate programs, and we selected randomly a certain number of students in each university. Uh, we have four universities in Montreal. We have uh, uh, three, two affiliated schools. We were able to get the consent of three universities and two affiliated schools, so we lost one university. Uh, just to situate uh, you, Montreal is a university city, so we have around more than 100,000 students in Montreal. So the coverage that we have is fairly a good coverage and a good representative sample of undergraduate students. Uh, the response rate is 41%, which could be considered quite good for this type of population. I'm gonna describe more in details the two components, the quantitative and the qualitative. So um, for the quantitative component, and I'm gonna focus just on the section that measured the context. And so people had to report on up to three recent gambling occasions. So each student was asked to report on the last most recent occasion, then report again on the second last uh, gambling occasion if it applies. And so each individual has to go up to three uh, gambling occasions. And at the end, we have 757 gambling occasions nested in 916 students. So some students reported on one occasion, others on two, and up to three. The dependent variable were time and money. This is how we measured expenditure. And for the independent variables, the only two variables that we measured at the individual level were gender and age. So again, the most important part are those variables, the contextual variables, and those are the dimensions with which we typified every context. So we ask people about the location where they gambled, and we ask them about the type of activity that they gambled on, and combining those two information, we created a typology based on the conceptual model uh, that was developed by Gerda Reed in the UK. So we were able to identify two types, two dimensions, the locations that were diffused versus concentrated. So diffused locations are those who are not necessarily de dedicated exclusively to gambling, and the concentrated locations, such as casinos, are dedicated only and primarily to gambling. And the second dimension is the type of activity. So among all the types of activity, we're able to create two categories, the skill activities, gambling activities, and the chance. We also measured the social dimensions of the context. So what type of relationships uh, gamblers had with their partners if they gambled with other people friends, families, um, acquaintances, uh, whether they gambled on the weekend or uh, during the week, uh, the size of the group, alcohol, and drug use. Now for the qualitative component, we, we did semi-structured interviews. So we invited a certain number of gamblers from the 
survey to participate to a follow-up study. And so we did, uh, for those who accepted, we retained all moderate risk gamblers, all, uh, all uh, problem gamblers, and we interviewed them uh, using semi-structured face-to-face interviews. Now, before I present the results, just to remind, uh, just to, to give a general you know, idea about why we're doing multi-level analysis. So basically, multi-level analysis is acknowledging that we have two levels of predictors. We have the individual level and we have the contextual level, and we're treating them as two separate levels. And so the first question that we would like to answer is, is there really a variation, not only between people, between individuals, but also between the context? So does money spending or time spent differ from one context to the other for one same individual? So if the answer is yes, then we enter the predictors and we try to assess how much do we explain from this variation from one context to the other. So does context matter? This is the big question and this is the multi-level structure. Hopefully it's represents well the idea that we have two levels. We have the occasions nested in individuals. And we're trying to predict time and money. So we will have two re separate results, one for time that is spent in gambling occasions and time and money, sorry. And so the first question is, do we have enough variation between the context? Do people behave in the same way from one location to the other or do we see differences. And this is the first answer for the time, uh, predicting time uh, as an outcome. And we see that 42% of the variation in time is between the location. And on average, people spend around 22 minutes gambling. For the money, students spend on average $7 uh, per occasion. And we have 40 uh, four percent of the variation that is situated between the context. So this is a kind of go, so we can move on now and try to explain those variations between the context. So those are the individual predictors and think about them as controls. Of course, it's showing that people do, older people spend less time gambling men spend more time gambling, but those are not the core predictors that we are interested in. So we control for them and then we look at the contextual factor. And what seem to be important at the contextual level are first, and you see the pluses next to the variables means that it's a significant effect. Drug use has no effect on the time students spend gambling in context. Alcohol consumption is a, or alcohol intake is a good, pred important predictor as well as uh, gambling on weekends, um, gambling with friends and acquaintances, and gambling of, on games of skills in diffused locations. So for time, being in a diffused place and playing on skills, just to give you an example, being in people's home, playing poker is an example of diffused and uh, game of skills. When we look at the, um, and how much did we explain with all those predictors, we were able to explain 62%, almost 63% of the variation between the context, which is very important uh, as, as a part of explained variance. When we look at money, again, we enter the same predictors, age is not significant, so, uh, and here also we have men who spend much more money on gambling than women. In terms of the contextual factors, alcohol use is not a predictor, drug use is not a predictor of the money that people spend. And now we can see that people who uh, gamble on weekdays spend more money. People who gamble with larger groups, so they are with friends, with, they are with more people, spend less money by opposition to gambling alone in a solitary mode. And finally, people who gamble in uh, concentrated locations do spend more money. 
So the type of activity is no more important. It's really the location that seems very important for money spending. And we did explain a more modest percentage, 36% of the variance at both levels. So the main conclusion is the following. We have the data reveals that we have, there is a robust influence of contextual characteristics to explain time and money spent in occasions. Uh, risk factor differ for time and money. When we talk about time, the challenge is the games of skills in diffuse places, so poker at home, for instance, and for money, the challenge is the concentrated locations, which is casinos. Now I'm gonna move to the more qualitative. So let's put some um, discourse or narratives around the results. And so we interviewed those gamblers and we asked them about the context where they gamble, what they, they think about different contexts. And this is what they said. In a private residence, for those students gamblers, the, 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 uh, the, the context is clearly defined and the playing field is clearly defined. So rules are clear. Are clear. It's a friendly competition uh, with equal opponents and uh, measures of times almost dissipate. So money is negotiated, it's contained, but time is not negotiated at all. Just to give you an example. This is what one of the inter our participants said. We play long games. We increase the blinds over a long period of time so games can last until five or six in the morning. One of my friends and I especially are very strategic, so we won't risk putting too much money. The game always finishes fairly. So it's a matter of having fun, of extending time. Money is not an issue. When they talked about the casino, uh, it's a setting of a greater uh, uncertainty. They say that they're not playing against each other. It's always against the house. Um, it's a delicate balance, so they can see the risk, and it's a continuous risk, continual risk about managing the money, and there's always the risk to lose control. Um, so to maintain the game pleasurable, uh, we, they, they think that they should manage their finances in a good way. Just one example, if I spend an evening at the casino, I try to stick to a set of budget and just make the time last. If I win, good. If I manage to lose, lose it all in 15 minutes, which has happened to me before, it's less interesting. I borrowed money to play, I didn't have fun, and then I left with a very negative outlook. So what can we conclude from, from those results? Gambling context affect both time and money expenditure. The questions, the configuration of the context, when, with whom, where, at what type of game we play are important dimensions. Risk factors do differ uh, for time and money. For time, the challenge uh, are the games of skills in diffuse places. So those students who get together and play in a very friendly way they don't really monitor time. On the contrary, they want time to last. Um, and for the money question, the challenge is the concentrated places such as casino. So it's always a tension between the, um, the prices, what we can call the prices, the risk of losing or winning, and the prize, which is the, uh, the fact of having fun. Implication for prevention, we have many implications, I think, that we can suggest for, for prevention. Uh, it's important to provide tips and tricks for students to balance um, leisure, 10 minutes, thank you, uh, leisure, gambling time, and daily responsibilities. Of course, it seems that gambling on poker in private location is not an issue for students, but there's still the issue of time of lasting time and not monitoring time. So there's a need to uh, also work on that so students can balance their time and not have negative consequences on other uh, chores or, and the responsibilities that they have. We have to focus also on breaking isolation and loss on of control in concentrated settings such as casinos. Uh, it's important to integrate also uh, the time factor uh, as a risk factor in uh, looking at uh, gam when looking at uh, gambling, 
and we have to target uh, gambling environments as the level of intervention. This has been already done in the, in the alcohol field. When we look at the gambling field, we know that there's a bunch of responsible gambling measures, but never evaluated, never targeting uh, uh, populations such as students and other vulnerable populations. And just to finish and, uh, and show you another context where maybe uh, it's the, I have mainly focused and the results have focused on the concentrated locations versus the diffuse uh, locations uh, with games of skills. Let's look at this video that will give a good um, image of um, a uh, diffuse and um, w uh, location where, where students are playing s some games of, of skills. So just press the picture and normally the, the video should, uh, should start. Just skip the ad, sorry. So I wouldn't need any, right? Because I have a straight. Oh, oh good for you! <laughs> okay, Thebes, how many do you need? Okay, I just need two. The um, ten of spades and the six of clubs. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Thebes, you can't do you can't. Oh wait, I got the ten of spades. Here, no, you want no. <laughs> Uh, no, see, uh, you, you can't do that. Oh, no, 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 you no, can't no, that's okay, that's okay, I don't need them, I'm going for fours. Oh, you're... <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. We've got salmon roulettes and assorted food mm -hmm. Whoa, 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 Monica, what are you doing? <laughs> this is a poker game. You can't serve food with more than one syllable. It's got to be like chips or dip or pretz. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, the dealer... All right, you know, we got it, we got it. Let's play for real, yeah, right? Go, High stakes, go, go. big bucks. All right, now, you sure? Phoebe just threw away two jacks because they didn't look happy. <laughs> I'm ready, so just deal. Okay, all right, last minute lesson, last minute lesson. Joey? Three? <laughs> eight! Eight, three! All right, very good. <laughs> I was bluffing. Aha! Uh -huh. And what is bluffing? <laughs> is it not another word for lying? <laughs> okay, sorry to break up this party, but I've got resumes to pack before work tomorrow. Rach, Rach, we gotta settle. Settle what? The Jamestown colony of Virginia. <laughs> you see, King George is giving us the land, so... <laughs> The game, Rachel, the game. You owe us money for the game. Oh, right. Uh, you know what, you guys? It's their first time. Why don't we just forget about the money, huh? Hell no! We'll pay. But Monica, I had another answer already. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? We want a rematch. Well, that's fine with me. You could use the money. <laughs> so basically, you get your yayas by taking money from all of your friends. Yeah. Yes, and I get my yayas from Ikea. <laughs> you have to put them together yourself, but they cost a little less. <laughs> Look, Rachel, this is poker. I play to win, all right? In order for me to win, other people have to lose. So if you're going to play poker with me, don't expect me to be a nice guy, okay? Because once those cards are dealt... <laughs> yeah? I'm not a nice guy. <laughs> okay, so I want to show this little uh, movie on, uh, on YouTube. We're very happy because it's exactly what our students told us. They get together, they have fun, they negotiate the rules, they tease each other. And one very important point was that the money that is coming out from the pocket of one of the friends is going to in the pocket of the, their other friends. So, so it's, this was a major, major point about the social dimension, the fun that they have, and that the money is not going for the house. And uh, so just to conclude, um, this paper was 
meant to demonstrate that we cannot talk about context in general, we cannot talk about problems in general, and the influence of context is important. This also command for uh, prevention that should be adjusted and for where the risk is. And some locations seems to be more associated with risk than others. So thank you for your attention. Merci.